Bonjour mes amis et bienvenue au Pandu dans le Sacre de Lune. Hello friends. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, by my attempt at a French introduction to this video, you already know that this is my series in which I use Terre de Marseille, Terre de Marseille adjacent, and antique Italian decks to help us um, pull out a perhaps more refined or a more crystallized response from the earlier spread that I do in the week. Usually that earlier spread is a large monstrosity, but these days I've cut that down. I've trimmed it down to a fairly small uh, spread. Um, but still, I'm continuing with this series to pull out, to extract, to refine a little bit more uh, meaning from that larger spread. And so I use, like I said, Terre de Marseille, Terre de Marseille adjacent, or antique Italian decks to help me do that. Plus, I've added an oracle card or a set of oracle cards to that recently. And I'm going to continue doing that. Um, now, just in case you haven't seen this previous uh, Thoth-based spread, and I'm focusing this year on the Thoth deck, I'll put a card up here for you to hop on over and take a look at that. Because one, it's actually not that long, and it gives you a good foundation, a basis from which the answer to this spreads question springs from. Yeah, I ask what is the central message of that last three card spread? So seeing that spread and seeing how that spread was read will give you a more of a understanding of why I'm reading these cards the way I'm reading these cards, right? So do that. Um, and just in case you have done that, and remember you don't have to watch all of these videos in one sitting. You can split them down. Even if they're only um, half an hour, you can split it up into three 10 minute bits if you want. It's all up to you. Yeah, YouTube lets you do what you do. So do what you do as you do when you do it. And here we go. Um, just in case you have seen that and you want a little bit of a refresher, uh, the title for that video was, I believe it, it was, I haven't actually um, titled it yet, but I think the title is going to be Fire and Water. Pretty basic. And Fire and Water, just in case you are not aware, are elementally ill-dignified in the elemental dignities. Yeah, fire and water are ill-dignified just as air and earth are ill-dignified. And um, fire and air are well-dignified. They build each other up. Earth and water are well-dignified. Yeah, so la the last spread that we looked at was asking us to consider where our inner conflict is. To give attention to our inner conflict, um, to the conflict between our passions and our emotions, to our um, upward reaching and the, our downward reaching spirituality even. Now, where is it that we are in elemental conflict and we want to clean that up? But we don't clean it up by getting rid of one or the other but we clean it up by eliminating that which is no longer uh, serving us and then finding a way to bring them together, to crystallize them, to allow that, that yin-yang to form a new vibrant whole. Um, <clears throat> whole, W-H-O-L-E, a unity. Uh, and we got some really good advice about looking at where we might be holding secrets, looking at where we might have energy blockages within, and allowing ourselves to stand up and stand out. So that's what that spread was basically saying. And so I asked, what is the central message of that spread? Which was pretty, pretty concise if you ask me, but still, that pretty concise spread after asking the question I asked of the tarot deck that I chose, which is a new deck to my library, gave us a monster of a response. So we've got a big old behemoth 
to look at together. So friends, if you're all ready, gird your loins, now get yourself all ready, and let's take a look at this immense answer to a simple question. Here we go. I know, right? Wow, just wow. How many cards were there? Yeah, there were one, two, three, four, five cards at the top. Yeah, and we'll look at that, uh, the, uh, what is it called? The Oracle card below. I only chose one large Oracle card as a bit of advice. And it's an interesting bit of advice. Um, but we'll look at that again in just a moment. I'll put up an image of that later on in the video. Um, but you saw those four, those five cards, right? Left to right. We had the King of Coins, then we had the Five of Wands, and then we had the Ace of Coins, then we had the Star, and then we had the Nine of Coins. Very, very interesting. A lot of Earth. A lot of Earth coming out of, as a response to that fire and water um, spread that we looked at just before. A little bit of fire is in here with the Five of Wands, but still, a lot of Earth. And I don't know if you noticed it, but all of the cards, all of the figures in the cards that had eyes were all looking from left to right, right? Now, you may be asking yourself, wait a second, Derek, wait a second, what is that deck? Well, okay, so I told you it's new to my library, right? And uh, this is what the back of the deck, the backs of the deck look like. And, uh... This is a redrawing of the Tarot de Paris, sometimes referred to as the anonymous Tarot de Paris, but I just call it the Tarot de Paris. And frankly, I love you to bits, I'm, uh, love you, love you, love you to bits, um, Artisan Tarot, but I've been waiting so long for your version of, for the redrawing of the Tarot de Paris. When I saw this one offered by Midnight Tarot, it's, they have an Etsy shop. I'll put a link to in the description box below. Yeah, They have a wonderful Etsy shop and they've got some really cool decks there. Um, redrawings of a couple of other uh, Tarot de Marseille decks and a redrawing of the Smith Weight. Very good drawer, very interesting, very creative mind behind that shop. Um, and having a redrawing of the Tarot de Paris just makes me happy because I love the I love the, the facsimile-ish, cleaned up facsimile-ish copy that I already have from Sixtus, but having one that's even clearer and easier to see is wonderful. And when t Artisan Tarot puts out theirs, I'll get theirs too, because their card stock is French Kiss, right? Their drawing is also beautiful. But so here, Terre de Paris. We'll start off with the King of Coins. We start off with power. And it's very interesting because the larger spread that we had, larger spread, the previous spread, actually this spread is huge. The previous spread was smaller. The previous spread started off with the King of Water, the Knight of Water the Knight of Cups, which for me would be the King of Water. And here we have the King of Coins. So this for me would be Fire of Earth, which is fine. Um, and the King of Coins points to abundance, prosperity, security, and success, right? And it's power. The King's power is based on nature and contact with the elements and contact with the earth. So we draw our energy and our power, very secure power, from the earth with this card. We have confidence and security. And we are cautious but optimistic at the same time. And another way of saying it, it's the ability to look for new achievements while, man, while maintaining the current assets. Now, it's a very conservative way of progressing through unintentional life, where we keep what we got and we look for new opportunities. We don't leap 
out in insane, well, in um, unplanned, in uh, inspired uh, action. We don't leap into the unknown. That's what I was looking for. We don't leap into the unknown. We are very willing to move into the new, but we do so from a very stable, from a very um, conservative place of moving towards the new and maintaining what we got. We add to what we've got. Maybe we leave a, let a little bit go and we keep going forward, right? Now, cautious, but optimistic. Not pessimistically, oh, grumbling, I'll do the new thing, but I want to keep what I've got, but I'll do the new thing. But no, no, this is an optimistic. I, I am secure. I'm confident. I love what I have. I'll move forward. I'll include the new. Maybe I'll let some of the old go and I'll change with intent, with focus and with at a slower or perhaps a more conservative pace. Yeah, that's all that's really coming to my mind right now is conservative. And we're not talking about political conservatives. We're not talking about politics here. Here, we're talking about conserving that which we have. Conserving nature is a good thing. Liberals do that. Yeah. Conserve conservation of, of um, resources is something that liberal, politically liberal people are really into. Think of um, John Muir in California or um, the people who started the environmental movement in the United States, for example, were liberals with an eye to conservation, that kind of conservative. Yeah. So that's where we start. We start from this place of feeling secure, feeling our abundance, moving into the new, maintaining the old, maintaining what we've got, I should say, moving into the new, looking for new opportunities, but maintaining what's going, what we have. And as we move into the new, very interestingly, we come across the Five of Wands because that's the direction we're moving in, right? And the Five of Wands is a playful card for me. It's a card of exper experimentation and taking some risks. So we're looking for the new, we're maintaining what we have, we're not going crazy, but we are able to take some risks here. The knight, I'm sorry, the king of coins is allowing him, her, themselves to take some risks, to follow a new desire. And we have the energy to go beyond what has been known into the new. So this is really moving the king of coins into the new, into the next evolution, evolution towards ex unexpected depths of larger dimensions. The king of coins with this fire is able to grow. And Jupiter was played a really key, um, a key function in this last spread that we did with the Thoth deck, with the Harris Crowley deck. Jupiter was all over the place. And this reminds me of the action of Jupiter from the King of Coins, moving from the King of Coins. Right? Playfully, experimentally, allowing ourselves to take a little, take some risks, maybe cautious risks, but take some risks creatively. And that leads us to what could be better? The ace of coins. And you'll notice in this ace of coins, we've got a figure. We've got a lion rampant holding a banner with the coin above, which is wonderful because lions associated with, for me, with Leo. And we had the Sagittarius decadent of Leo was the Leo decadent of Sagittarius. It was the Sagittarius decadent of Leo in, uh, what it was recalled in the two of discs from the previous spread. So here, the, while this isn't the two of discs and this is not the, um, the uh, complement of, of Jupiter in Capricorn with the Sagittarius decadent of Leo. Okay, so it's not any of that. But still, that sense of Jupiter is implied here for me. 
that expansiveness which moves into this ace of coins, opportunity. Now this opportunity must be cultivated. Right? It's the seed is planted, the seed needs, wants to be watered, wants the environment to be cleared so it has the room to grow. So here we have potential prosperity through a new venture. Which is wonderful. You see the lion moving forward, right? And we have a potential for reward as well. But we're called to have a practical perspective with this new opportunity because it does ask to be nurtured, right? It's not, ooh, opportunity, la da 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 da, let's move on. But it, the practical perspective of nurturing and tending to that new opportunity, the new um, <clears throat> venture. And we want to direct our questions to concrete aspects of life. Concrete, earth, ace of discs, right? Ace of coins. So the question here now, as we move forward is, how do we tend? How do we nurture this opportunity, which came from the king of coins finding his playful side. And the next card is, beautifully, the star card. Now you might be saying, what the heck? That's the, yes, that's the star card. And here we see an astronomer. Yeah, looking up at the heavens, looking in the same direction as the king of coins and the lion and the ace of coins. And the astronomer is looking up. You can see the star up here. You see the star, you see the compass and the astronomer's hand. So the astronomer here in the star card calculates and measures and discovers. And the star card is often associated with Aquarius, though not all, for all systems, um, which gives us kind of that idea of measuring a little bit, you know, finding the direction forward. Because the star card for me in addition to purification and regeneration, it's the healing after the disruption of the tower, right? Um, also, the idea of hope and faith. Faith is, I, I think, called for here as we tend to and nurture the opportunity of the Ace of Coins. Faith is called for and hope is called for. The card is also pointing towards success and luck. Again, reminding me of Jupiter. But we also see, think of it as the North Star, right? This is pointing us in the direction of where we want to go, and we'll get there. We'll get there in the next card. But here we want to accept ourselves as we are and show ourselves as we are. We want to allow ourselves to present who we truly are. Yeah? In the previous spread, we had a little bit of secrets that we were hiding, and maybe we don't want to reveal them all, but we do want to stand up and stand out, and that was indicated as advice for the, from the previous spread. So, show up as we are, and allow ourselves to be guided by our connection to the divine. And there's one more thing that some people... Uh, see in the star card, which is celebrity, which is interesting because the last oracle card for the previous spread was another, none other than publicity, celebrity, right? So that's the direction we're moving in. Maybe standing up, standing out, having faith, allowing this opportunity to uh, grow and helping it to grow, nurturing it, which leads us to which card? leads us to the Nine of Coins. Now, this card is actually problematic for me. I tend to read Nines in a fairly negative way. Negative. In a less than positive way. In a less than... Um, in, a, in a sense of breakdown, where the Fives for me are breakouts. Nines are often breakdowns. Yeah, the energy builds and builds in the eights, and then finally it cracks. It cracks. Yeah. 
before we reach the culmination of the ten. Um, so the nine of coins could be relocation, could be closing a business. If that means anything to you, sometimes those breakdowns are the source of a new opportunity, right? Kind of touched on that in the previous video. Not specifically uh, closing businesses or relocation, but that those things which seem to be obstacles and things standing in our way can oftentimes be that which guides us in the direction that we really wanted to be going anyways. So maybe that could be a benefit. The Nine of Coins could be a period of rest, a need to, okay, after that eight, we need to break, give me a break, I need a break, yeah, to rest up after that. But it could also be a regeneration of motivation, which now begins to move closer to what could naturally flow from the star. It could be financial transformation that leads to a new project, leading to a new construction, which seems to flow more naturally from the star card, right? We might find a way to carve a niche within an existing system. And that was also something indicated in the previous uh, spread that we bring things together and we create change within the existing system. And that could be this nine of coins card here. And yeah, we can't, we're, endurance is called for. Our ambition is called for here to move us in the direction so that we can reach the 10 and then start all over again, right? So these cards seem to me to be pointing in a very clear direction. Now we start off with recognizing our success, whatever that may be. What is your success? However, you, whoever you are, wherever you are, wherever I am and whoever I am, but wherever we are, whoever we are, there we have success. We may not be giving it any attention because we may give, be giving all of our attention to the things that we think are not working in our lives without, instead of paying attention to our successes. And this is a time to pay attention to where is our security? Where is our success? Being a spirit, co-creating that beautiful body that you have might be this enough of that success for the rest of this spread to work. You know, this success is not necessarily being the CEO of the company. That's not exactly, we are all kings of coins. Whether we are in male bodies, in female bodies, in trans bodies, in cis bodies, in a non-binary, um, non-conforming bodies, in um, intersex bodies, whatever kind of body we're in, we're all kings, we're all queens, we're all knights, we're all pages. So we, we all have the king of coins within us. And we're here at this moment, we are called to embody that. Embody whatever you can point to as your success and own that. Whatever you can claim as your security and your stability, own that. Find confidence within that. It doesn't matter if you're going through a divorce, you've broken up with your, your lover, you have to be, you're kicking them out, you're moving out, whatever, it, you've lost your job, what, I've lost my job, whatever it is, there is still something there that is our security, our stability. It could just, it could be the bodies that we are co-creating. It could be as focused as that. Or it could be broader. You, you do you, boo. You find yours. And that's where we want to begin with. That's where we want to begin. We want to be cautious and find our optimism as we look for the new as we look for the new and we pl are playfully experimenting and taking some creative risks in 
from the position of a conservative mindset, where we maintain that which we have and we take a little bit of risk to see what's out there, yeah? To go beyond what has been known and evolve. And as we do that, we will have the chance to find an opportunity that will call for nurturing, but that nurturing and the potential war rewards are going to be fed by our hope and our faith in that, by our feeling of success, the success of what we have accomplished up until now, and the success of this new opportunity, because that new opportunity is success. Before it is manifest, before it is um, entirely revealed or, 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 or created, it is already a success. And we want to follow our North Star, our North Star pointing in the direction of our powerful flow of, in, of intention. And maybe stand, allow ourselves to stand up and stand out as we do the next step of maybe closing down some old shop that is no, that is no longer viable and transform that which is leading into a new project within the construct of where we are within the existing system that we have engaged in and we are participating in, creating that new and finding our ambition and our endurance and allowing ourselves to stand out and up. Does that make sense? And from this, this next Oracle card as being like the culminating piece of advice, I think is very apropos. Let me show you that card all by itself right now. I can't think of a card from this deck, which is um, the Mildred Payne's Oracle of Enchantment. I'll have a link to this card, to this deck below. It's produced by Patrick Valenzo, one of my favorite creators. Um, there'll be a link to this below. Um, I'm not sure which versions are still available, whether the reprinting for this is still available. Um, there's, there was a second edition of this sepia tone deck, but there are other versions of this deck that I'm sure that one of them will still be available. Um, <clears throat> so link to this one and also a link to the Etsy shop for the creator of the redrawn uh, Tarot de Paris will be in the description box below. Anyways, here is the card that we got. Perfect card. Number 25, 29, I should say, Levitation. What does that mean? Well, in the picture, you see a talented magician levitates slowly into the air as the townsfolk gasp in utter ama amazement. Now, you'll notice that this magician is levitating into the air from within his, her, their existing environment. Right? You see the town right there. And this card points to the ability to transcend limitations. It could be a miracle, but the miraculous, we think of the miraculous as something that is rare and, in, and very few people find. However, there, is, there are everyday miracles that we don't give attention to. And yet it doesn't have to be as dramatic and as shocking as perhaps somebody rising into the air and levitating, but this is a miracle. That is, we have the potential to recognize the miracles that happen within our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. And our hidden skills can be revealed. We had points to that in the previous spread, just saying. The, that which is we are hiding within ourselves, we might want to reveal, rising above the crowd. We had indications of that as advice in the previous spread as well. So, as we do the work of the King of Coins moving to the direction of the Nine of Coins through the Ace of Coins of Opportunity, we want to allow ourselves to rise, to transcend our limitations, not shattering what we have where we are and what we are now, not that kind of radical transformation, but rising from 
from within our current circumstances, discovering the miracle of who we are, allowing those skills which we are not, haven't allowed to come out to be revealed. And it's okay to stand out above the other people around us. It's okay. It's beautiful. As we rise, we lift everyone else up with us. And we can also, as indicated in the previous spread, um, nurture those around us as well as we rise. And we don't have to lift people up from below. We can rise and... What is the word I'm looking for? We want to show, we can show the way, we can inspire, that's it. We can inspire others to rise along with us as we encourage them as well. Now, living the intentional life and along with the law of attraction, we know that we cannot make people succeed. We can't fix other people, but we can inspire them to become more than they have been so far. We can inspire them by leading by example. We can inspire them by encouraging them as well without pushing them to change, to become, to do, to fix, to make. We can inspire that. That's what we're called for there in, as we live our lives intentionally. And that's what we're asked to do here in this card as well. Rise above, transcend our limitations. And as we do that, we will be of benefit to those around us as well. Does that make sense? If it does, let me know in the comments below. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear from you. So friends, here we are at the end of this um, behemoth of a Terre de Marseille adjacent reading. Because Terre de, the Terre de Paris is not, while, while it is produced in France, is not of the purest purest, not purest, but purest, the people who look for purity in uh, Théo de Marseille, is not that. Now, there are differences. There are many, many differences. It's neither a type 1 nor a type 2 Théo de Marseille, but for me, it is Théo de Marseille, and so I'm calling it Théo de Marseille adjacent. Yeah? Even though it's a really, really old deck. Um, so, friends, here we are. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think it could be read differently? Does it mean anything to you? I would love to hear from you. Let me know. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up button. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. All of those things help bring the channel out into the sphere, onto the gaze of people who have not seen the channel before. And maybe some of them would be interested in seeing this content. Maybe. So you're helping them a lot. And friends, if you want a reading from me, my email address is below, thehangedmaninthemoon at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. We'll get your reading. Okay? Okay. So friends, here we are. Before we go, as always, I want to wish you love, joy, well-being, and pure awareness. Thank you.